Hey. How you doing? Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, How YouTube. How you guys doing over there? We'll Facebook. Be streaming. Okay. Good morning, Facebook. How you guys doing today? Um, if you were watching the Bible study uh, from last week, we are continuing in how to master the Bible or mastering the Bible. And uh, Dr. Burks is teaching the class on how to master the Bible. What's up, Greg? Uh, very, very important information. Good morning, uh, Greg. Uh, very, very important information uh, to master the Bible. Many people think it cannot be done. It's impossible uh, to learn the Old and the New Testament. But we stand here to let you know that it is possible. Everything that is written in the scriptures must be explained and they must be discussed and it must be talked about. So Amen. every Saturday we get together to discuss the scriptures. We study them throughout the week and we get together to discuss them because we share the same faith. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dr. Burks, where are we starting today? I'm going to make sure where are we starting today. We're going to start... Uh, in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, uh, we started with uh, verse uh, 45 last Bible study. First Corinthians 15, 45? 15 and 45, and we're going to read and discuss from 45 to the end of the chapter. 15. Okay. I think that's very important. Whatever you think is very important. It is very important. we should discuss. Amen. Nothing's off the table. Nothing's off the table when it comes to Bible study. B-I-B-L-E. So 15 and 45 reads. What's up, Kaylin? How you doing? Uh, 15 and uh, 45 reads. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spirit did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so are those who are of heaven. And just as we bore the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. Can you read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 20, where it says, For all, for by death came, uh, by one man came death, and by another man came the resurrection of the dead. That's in 15, uh, about 20, 21. 21. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead, comes also through a man. Okay, so that sounds like that's before. Before and after. Death came by one man, but the resurrection of the dead came by another man. So there, there those two there's two there's two deaths, mm -hmm. physical and spiritual. Mm -hmm. 
There's uh, two resurrections. Physical and spiritual. By, one, for, by the first man, Adam, we were made sinners. By another man, we were made righteous. Mm -hmm. But in 1 Corinthians 15, 45, it says, For the first man, he said, For the first man, Adam, became a living soul. Living soul. That's life. Mm -hmm. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Mm -hmm. That's life. But you notice that one brought death and one brought life. Okay. And then it goes on to say the, 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 the spiritual is not first, but the natural and then the spiritual. Right. So first natural and then spiritual. Right. So in, uh, the, my question is, is if the, the um, natural... Did not come first. Uh, it says, where does it say that at? 40. So, oh, that, here it is. The, the spiritual did not come first, uh, but the natural. That's just referring to the men that came. Right. Okay. Right. Spirit. So the natural man, which was who we know as to be Adam in right. the garden. Right. The natural man came first. Right. Spirit, spirit always been first because we're just, we're just spirit materialized. Right, but this is referring to mankind. Right. Okay. Right. Right. But but when if you look at it, we only can see physical, cause we're not born again yet. So we just see physical. But when you're born again, you are become spiritual. We just spirit materialized. When we take off this flesh, we become back to spirit. All the spirit is is the breath of life. Keep going. Okay. What's up, Akari? What's up, Nation? How you guys doing? But the physical death is backwards. Huh? I mean, like, you, the physical death is physical death, or is a spiritual death comes before a spiritual, a physical death? Well, we all in Adam died, so we died a spiritual death. So it's we, spiritual, we, yeah. physical. <laughs> yeah, we died a, we died a spiritual death, because when we came out, we didn't know the Creator. So born... Even though we are born physically, uh -huh. we're born into sin, so we're born into a spiritual death. Well, see, now we're going to deal with that when it gets down where it says this corruptible mm -hmm. must put on incorruption Bless and you. this mortal must put on immortality. But it says the first man is of the earth, earthy. And the last man is the Lord from heaven, for we have born, or we have bad the image of the earthly. Right. So shall we also bear the image of the heavenly. Okay, but before we go there, I just wanted just to, to ask about the actual birth. Mm -hmm. So all human beings that are actually born into earth, there's a scripture that a lot of people hold on to Great, great scripture mm -hmm. uh, from Isaiah that we're born. Actually, it's from Psalms fifty-one. We're born into we're 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 um, we're born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Yeah, so right. everybody is uh, born in sin, but when we're born, even though we're alive, the Bible says we're dead. Right. We came here doa. Dead on arrival spiritually. <laughs> we okay. had no we had no understanding of the Heavenly Father. Wasn't no one to teach us about the Bible. Okay. Uh, uh, Psalms 51 and 5. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Right. Let's see. And I think in the King James it'll say something different. Uh, right. Right, shape, shape, shaping an iniquity. Right. Yeah. For, and now in First Peter one and twenty three, Peter said, "Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever." Right. Yes. But, but before we go to being born again, uh -huh. <laughs> first we got to get born the first time, and then I'm just trying to deal with that. Um, born that first time, what happens to us? After um, we're born, we're just 
The Walking Dead? Yes. Dead man walking. Dead woman walking. We came here DOA. But see, in 1 Peter 1.23, it says, being born again of corruptible seed. Keep that in mind. Corruptible. You ain't no good. You're going to be corrupted. When you come out of the womb, you innocent. As a baby, you innocent. He said, he said incorruptible seed in Peter. Not corruptible. Be, no, being born again, not of corruptible seed, okay. but incorruptible seed. So let's deal with the corruptible seed. Because in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, For we have borne the image of the earthly, so shall we also bear the image of the heavenly. Okay, so we got to, so listen, so... So corruptible seeds and incorruptible seeds are images. Yes, sir. Now, Adam was created in the image and the likeness, not us. <laughs> we lost that in Adam. We died in Adam and we came out DOA, dead on arrival. Well, the, um, seems like our births. We, uh, Job wrote that when I'm born, I'm naked and bare. That's right. So, I mean, Adam, Adam, before uh, he disobeyed the creator, he was clothed with the power of the Almighty. He was a son of God, according to Luke 3 and 38. Right. So he lost his clothing. He, be, uh, he became, once they ate from the tree, mm -hmm. they realized they were naked. Right. And they lost their clothing. Right. But we we lost we lost our identity in Adam. We, we, we were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Mm -hmm. See, we lost our image and likeness, right? Through Adam, but we can pick it up through Jesus Christ. Okay, so right, right. Yeah, but right. see, but but see, it, 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 now if you go on, uh huh, it says. Uh, is it 20, uh, 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 15 and, 15 and 47? You, you got a question? No. What does 1547 says? 1547 says the first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. Okay. 48 verse. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. 49. And just as we bore the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. All right. Now, when does that start? People, you ask the average Christian, when does that start? And they'll say, after you die. Well, the first part says, just as we have born, which means we already have that image, right? Past tense. Wh which one? That's the, the first man, Adam. That's okay, so well, we have born the, the image of the, of the earthly. Man. Right. So shall we also bear the image of the heavenly. That's present. I mean, that's future, future tense. tense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so shall. Right. Future tense. But do you, do you, do you get it when you die or do you get it before you die? That's the question. And people get it wrong every time. Well, it depends on how you spin it. Right? I mean, how do they get it wrong? I mean, are you reborn, which means you have to go through a death? So they, that could happen now. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, so. now, 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 that's why she's your wife. You hear what she said? You don't have to die to go to heaven, but you have to die. Yeah. You have to die to self. You have to master self and order. You, you, have, you don't have to die a physical death to go to heaven, but you have to die. You have to die out to yourself. Can you continue? Oh. Were you? No, no, okay. Well, I, was, I thought you had a little bit more. I thought uh, you were trying to... I don't know about that. Right now. It depends on how you spin it. Right. Yeah. Or, like Peter said in 2 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 20, 21, he said, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. 
For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. A, a, a lady told me one time, I was trying to explain something to her, she said, everybody have their own interpretation. And well, Your own interpretation is not good. Now, but, huh? My question would be, mm -hmm. we know how to bear the image of the earthly man. We, 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 we see it every day. Uh -huh. I mean, how do we bear the image of the heavenly man? How do we bear the image of the heavenly man? Yeah. Read about him. <laughs> they, they, they say the word Christian means Christ-like. Mm -hmm. But you won't see the word Christ in the Old Testament. It's Messiah or be Messiah-like. Well, you ain't going to do no good if they just read about it. Not, well, you got you yeah, you, to do it. You right? got to get a revelation. And then you got to master yourself. Mm -hmm. And every, that requires putting into practice. You, yeah, the Right. <laughs> That's right. Right, but I mean, I it does do good to read about it because most people have never read about it. That's right. Well, no, I know, but you got to read it in order to put it into practice. You can't put it into practice what you don't read it, read and understand. No, I agree with that okay. second half. Mm -hmm. Right, the second half is it has to be put into practice. So you have people that don't read about it, and then you have people that read about it and don't put it into practice. Yes. Those are a lot of different groups in there. Mm -hmm. Then you have a lot of people that read about it and then put their own opinion on it and create all the different sects and different, uh, not sex, S-E-X, but S-E-C-T. Mm -hmm. uh, different divisions and different denominations. And, you know, so, so it becomes a big mess. But, you know. Well, see, a lot of people but, but don't know. To, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go trying ahead. to figure out how to put on the image of the earthly man should be taught in every institution. But instead of it being taught in every institution, with Dr. Burks is saying, he's asking, when does that start? When every institution that I've ever been to, it starts when you put, when you get put in that casket. They now have transcended. They've now transformed. When the Apostle Paul has been writing about transform through the renewing of your mind, it, you know, it's something that's said, but it's not taught to practice it. You know, right. So it's always taught that. You're going to hurt somebody's feelings. You're going to say something wrong. You're going to do something wrong. If you can be uh, a psychic or prof or speak prophetically that I'm going to do something wrong, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't speak prophetically that I'm going to do something right. Right. <laughs> you know, why do you know I'm going to go that way, <laughs> right. but not know I can't go that way? Right. Why do you tell me that I can't go that way, Right. and the only way I can go is that way? Right. You know, so... Well, the question is, how do you bear the image of the, the heavenly man? The information, I mean, I don't think you're going to find it in church or an institution. They're not teaching it. Well, where are you going to find it? I mean, you got to read it. <laughs> you got to read and study it. Yeah, you got to read and study it. Okay, so you and I know, Dr. Avery know that, that if you read Romans, the sixth chapter start at verse 1 through 6. Romans, the sixth chapter. Now, in Romans, while you're getting that, in Romans, the fifth chapter, if you read Romans, the fifth chapter, it tells you that the first, uh, 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 one man brought sin. Mm -hmm. One man made us sinners, and another man made us righteous. They say, well, you can't be righteous. But he said, one man made us sinners, and another man made us righteous. And then Paul, in, in, in Romans 6, starting at verse 1, Paul said, Well, in Romans 6, verse 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By, uh, by no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or, do, or don't you know that all of, the, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Mm -hmm. Now, what verse did you end in? I ended at verse 4. Go to, go to 6. Go to 6, okay. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. 
For we know that our old self was crucified <laughs> with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. That's verse 6. Right. Who know, who know about the old man? If there's an old man, there must be a new man. But if you notice, it says we we in a death-like state like his. But before that, it says if we were baptized with him, we rose with him. We were crucified. We rose with him in newness of life. So there, as a newness of life, the old life is no longer. Right. See, but it says the old man. So if there's an old man, there's a new man. Some people don't know who they're fighting. Oh, absolutely. I mean, but uh, like, like I said, we, they, they, uh, people don't teach us that we can have a new life. As a matter of fact, they tell us if you was once a cheater, you're always a cheater. Once a liar, you're always a liar. I mean, that's the world. Right. You know, even a convicted felon can't get a job and he's been rehabilitated. Right. You can't talk about something you don't know. A man can be ignorant in a library. Or he can starve to death in a supermarket. That's his choice. Mm -hmm. See, but, but if you go on in 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, 49, 49 verse, did that answer your question? Yeah. About, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it doesn't answer uh, the question on uh, how to bear the image of a heavenly man. But but um, but the only answer to be uh, to be would be to study it or to um, is to get a, a, a clear picture. I mean, as, as as a young as a young male in my neighborhood, we looked for role models. Mm -hmm. We looked for people to look up to. Right. We couldn't find any, but we didn't we didn't know how to. Uh, you go to church and you and then you put on a suit and tie and you try to live the life of a righteous man and they mm -hmm. say you can't do that neither. So we don't have an example of a person that is bearing the image of a heavenly man. You know, mm -hmm. like where where is do we do we do we have a person that we can Billy Graham or what's that guy name? I don't know. Who 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 do you know that bears the image of a heavenly man? I know somebody. You? I, well, it was in, outside of this room. I know. I'm not talking about us. We do. I, 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 I'm just speaking. So you haven't ran into him yet? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if, even if we say we bear in the image of the heavenly man, the people behind the screen say, no, you're not. You see what I'm saying? I mean, look, the man told you he's going to follow you around. No, he didn't say he's gonna follow me around. He said when I told him I don't sin no more, he 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 called he called me a liar because because in John it says if you say you have not sinned, you make God a liar. Right. See. So even in and and that was in a Bible study. So even when you go to a Bible study, the people that get together and study the Bible, they're not trying to bear the image of the heavenly man. They're trying to they're still trying to bear the image of the earthly man and telling you you can't do it. If I can't do it, you can't do it. Well, what does, see, the, the, the thing is, what does the Bible say? So they don't have the knowledge of the Bible. They believe the Bible, but they don't believe the Bible. Well, you know, I, I ain't going to no more Bible studies like that no more. I'm only going to Bible Well, you studies. need it there. You need it there. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. Nah, no, you don't no. believe the Bible, I ain't going no well, more. You, you need it, though. Because you don't want, want people that believe the Bible. Well, you got to you gotta <laughs> baptize the people in the Word. Don't drown them, but <laughs> baptize them. You know, don't dunk them under there and leave them under there. <laughs> yeah. But see, but the thing is, no, the thing is, now, what did Yahshua the Messiah say in the 16th chapter of the book of John, uh, the seventh verse? It's expedient that I go. If I go not away, the Comforter cannot come. Or the Holy Spirit will not come. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when he has come, he's going to reprove the world. Okay. When he comes where? In who? In you. In and you. us. Be so, in the image. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. All right. So so what does 1 Corinthians 15 and, and 40, uh, 15 and 50, 50. say? Oh, right, yeah, 50. You with us, Dr. Avery? Mm -hmm. 
I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Hold it right there. I'm going to hold it right there. <laughs> the kingdom of God and the church is two different places. Absolutely. A lot of people don't know that. It's a mess. Right. It's a mess. See, because see the word church, the word church, or uh, uh, the Greek word is ekklesia, which is called out. So you called out of something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now, if you called out, see, now, 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 in the Old Testament, you have congregation or assembly. So if you go to uh, what you call the church, you, you just assembling yourself. They always use this uh, 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 Hebrews 10 and 25 for good not to assemble yourself together. Hey, but, uh, huh? Go ahead. We got to touch this real quick. We got to touch what? Can go ahead and touch what, it. Can you tell me what Nashon just put on there? What Nashon put on there? This is going to be good. We hmm? encourage to believe Upon physical death. Not that one. The one before that. That's not <laughs> touch screen. We probably can't see it. There it is right there. But what does it say? The world, I'm sorry, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. This, that is the word of faith that we proclaim nine. That's so Romans 10. Then, Romans right, yeah, right, right, Romans. right, 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 yeah. right, right. That they get it wrong. Right. They get it wrong in, in, Sorry, in the house Nate. of worship. Sorry, Nation. Uh, you always got to know where Paul got that from. He got that from Deuteronomy. Go check out Deuteronomy, and you'll see where Paul got that from. That, that, that scripture right there, somebody taught me that if I memorized that verse right there, I was saved. That's what they taught me. Sounded good, didn't if it? If I memorized that <laughs> verse right there, I'm right. saved. That's right. it. You don't need right. to know anything mm -hmm. else in the Bible. If you go back and look at that scripture, you'll see that that actual scripture or a portion of that scripture came from Moses in Deuteronomy where he says, where is the word? It shouldn't be far from you. You don't have to go up to heaven and somebody bring it back down and proclaim it to you. Right. You don't have to go across the sea for somebody to go get it and proclaim it to you. Right. The scriptures... You should know them. They should be right here. Right? Psalm 119 11. Psalm 119 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart yeah. that I might not sin against thee. Yeah. But it, it but it when he when he got down there, if uh -huh. thou wilt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yeah. See? But but the faith is, the key is the faith. Because mm -hmm. we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not things are not seen. Right, but in in, in he not but but in Hebrews eleven, all the way down at the bottom, mm -hmm. he said all of these people were commended for their faith, but they had not seen the things that was promised to Correcto. them. Correcto. But, <laughs> but look at what look at what he said at the end mm -hmm. about me and you. Right. He left a message here for me and you, and he said, "Where we going?" Oh, Hebrews 11. Okay. The very last verse. Uh huh. He said, All of these said, These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Right. That's faith. Uh huh. And he says, Since God had planned something better for us, them and, and the, the prophets, correct. And us, correct. So God planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. They waiting on us to they believe waiting, their they, message. They waiting on. They ain't gotta wait on me no more. Well, nah, ain't waiting on me. <laughs> yeah, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Wait, go ahead. ahead. No, that's what. Hey, Nation. Yeah. Yeah, but that's good. I commend him. Keep mm -hmm. reading. Keep studying. Now, First Corinthians fifteen fifty. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So Jesus told Nicodemus. You just can't walk in physically. No, no, no. He said you can't even see it physically. Right. Yeah. But you know, God told me to take the money that I had and invest it into the kingdom. The kingdom don't need no money. <laughs> he said, man, you could have invested that money into the kingdom. 
He was talking about his building, his church, the one with his name. Oh, he is. Yeah, you, you're making him rich. Anybody, yeah. anybody that anybody that rents is paying somebody else mortgage. Absolutely. And he called it the key. He called it the kingdom. Right. His kingdom. Right. That two different things. Because we can see him. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't see the spiritual kingdom. No. No. Okay. You, then you can't even see where Jesus went into. When he went into the <laughs> most holy place. Right. You can't even see. Because he was outside the city gates. That's right. On that cross. That's right. But when the high priest went in there, they went in there with the blood of animals. But the Bible says he didn't go into the copy, mm -hmm. which was the shadow of the things that right. were in the reality. Right. He went into heaven itself. He went into heaven itself. Can you see that? Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. That's what I'm talking about. So 1 Corinthians 15 okay, and 51. Okay, I declare to you, uh, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Okay, so in NIV it says perishable, imperishable. Right. And the King James says corruptible and incorruptible. So those two different uh, entities. Right? Right. But we have food that's perishable. That's right. At the, at, at the uh, supermarkets, they, uh, we have perishable items to go back. Yeah, if we don't, if we, when we buy our, best, our mm -hmm. broccoli, right. if we don't eat it quick, right. it's going to perish. Right. Bananas too. That's right. And we're going to perish one of these days, whether you believe or not. Whether you believe in the Creator or not, you're going to leave here. You're going to perish. You're going to leave here. You're getting older and older and older. I'm going to die? Yeah, you're going to die. You're going to take off this flesh. Mm. <laughs> you know, it don't seem like I'm ever going to die. Well, would you would say it depends on how you flip it. <laughs> <laughs> that baby depends on how you flip it. You got to flip it. Yeah. You got to look. Hey, you got a heads and tails of a coin. Yeah, I, 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 we, I live like I'm never leaving this earth. I don't feel like I'm ever leaving this earth. Well, we, we read what Jesus told Martha and Mary about Lazarus. And Jesus said, he that believeth on me shall never die. And then he looked at uh, Martha and said, do you believe that? <laughs> mm-hmm. See, that's a that's a heavy hey, that's a heavy pill to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. But that has to be explained. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But that perishable and imperishable, go ahead. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkle of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the death will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Okay, now, we said, we shall not all sleep, sleep, but we shall all be changed. Sleep, change. Death and sleep is synonymous. I agree. Go, go. You stay, right, you stay right there. <laughs> See, you know me. You know my thoughts well, about I know. No, you know my thoughts about I know. See, we've been together so long. You know where I'm going. Where am I going? Rise from the dead, you sleeper. <laughs> but you said sleep? That's right. I'm going you see, to and click. <laughs> hey, I'm buried. Go, go the there. You, you all right. Now, let Dr. Avery go there. You stay at 1 Corinthians 15. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 Ephesians 5 and 14. See, sometimes I study, I connect words together. Yes, you do. Yes, yeah. you do. And see, not because we like minded. Yeah. We have the spiritual mind. Hey, Paul said, and he said, yes. hey, if we might as well eat and drink, but to be, you know, yeah. tomorrow we die. That's if we, right. If we ain't living for nothing. That's right. So, what does, first, uh, what does uh, Ephesians 5 and 14 say? It says, This is why it is said, we Wake up, sleepers, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Okay, so so sleep and death is synonymous. When that person is laying in that casket, they look like they sleep. Physically sleep. Mm -hmm. But hey, the only person that wake them up is the creator. Mm -hmm. We can't wake them up, but if you if you sleep physically, 
the alarm clock gonna wake you up, or some noise gonna wake you up, or somebody, your husband or your wife gonna wake you up. Mm -hmm. But if you're dead, you cannot wake, nobody can wake you up. So it says, uh, rise from the dead, old sleeper. And Christ will give you light, understanding. Mm -hmm. See? So, so death, it don't always mean physical death. It means a spiritual death. You spiritually sleep. You don't know you've been asleep until you wake up. How often have you fell asleep and woke up and realized you missed the program that you was planning on watching? Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not talking about a, 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 a death-like state. It's talking about sleep. Mm. There's a scripture here that says, right here in 1 Corinthians 15, that says, Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying that um, if we don't, he said if there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And, and if Christ has not been raised and our preaching is useless, then so is your faith. And then he goes on to say, then... Then if Christ has not, uh, at 16 he says, for if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. Mm -hmm. Christ has not been raised, your faith is fertile. You are still in your sins, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ has are lost. perished, are lost. Right. Right. And then in Matthew, you always help me find this one, but mm -hmm. Matthew is... Uh, when they point to his resurrection, Matthew 28. Matthew 27, 52. 27, 52. So Matthew 27, 52 or 51, it says, at the moment, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. And this is after Jesus cried out his last, his uh, cry out in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Mm -hmm. It says, at that moment, the curtain was torn from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. Mm -hmm. And the bodies of the holy people who had died were raised to life. So when they died, mm -hmm. they were asleep in Christ. Right. They were raised to life. Right. That's what the Bible says. Right. It says they came out of their tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy cities and appeared to many people. We can deal with that some other time. I'm back at 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Sleep. Sleep. So, so, from the dead. So, 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 so when it talks about uh, with ver uh, verse uh, 51. 50, 51, listen, uh -huh. I tell you in mystery, we were not all sleep. We're not all spiritually dead. That's what it's saying. We're not all spiritually dead. We all spiritually dead, but it says we were everybody, not, we're we, not going to all be spiritually dead. We were not all sleep. But we're we not going to always be spirit. We're not going to all be spiritually dead. There's still something spiritually dead. Having woke up. Still sleep. But we will all be changed. Changed in a moment. No, that's in that's that's some no the in trumpet a flash. in the flash. In the twinkle of an eye. Right. At the last trumpet. Okay. Now 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 you you remember in, in numbers numbers in numbers ten mm -hmm. it talks about the creator told Moses to make two trumpets, one for battle and one for assembly. That's a physical trumpet. What's the significance of the trumpet? The trumpet is a message. Because they're throughout the Bible, the trumpets. Right, right, right. A physical trumpet, and, and you got a spiritual trumpet, and the physical trumpet is a message. Because the physical trumpet was for Israel. When the trumpet sound, that it makes a sound for battle. Okay. And then another sound for assembly. If you don't know the sounds... And then one is for battle, and you think it's for assembly, you're going to be killed. <laughs> but you'd have to know the sound. Don't you know? Now, I ride the bus. This is amazing now. This is what I'm saying. I ride the bus. Mm -hmm. Now, you have old folks, which is me, which is uh, 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 um, senior, citizen. senior citizen. And then you have youth, and then you have adults. Mm -hmm. Each one has a different compass card. Hear me now. And when you get on the bus, when you hit that compass car, it makes a sound. Mm -hmm. It makes a sound for senior citizens. It makes a sound for adults. And it makes a sound for youth. Now, if a 21-year-old kid 
get on the bus with my compass card, which is senior citizen. He hit that in it, and as a senior citizen style, the bus driver know that boy ain't over 55. So they all have distinguishing sounds. Yes. And my point is, the Trump is that the creator or the, the, the uh, now, now the, the Bible used trumpet, but actually it's a shofar, which is a, a, a horn, a ram's horn mm -hmm. that they made. But the creator told Moses to make two ram horns, one for battle, one for assembly. Now, in, in, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 43, it says the trumpet shall sound. What trumpet? The trumpet for assembly. The message. Okay. Um, it says, in a flash, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Can I add a scripture? You can go right ahead. Because I know you're going to get a good one. <laughs> you, you, listen, listen for the trumpet. You ready for the trumpet? All right. Isaiah? Nope. No? Uh, 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 John, the fifth chapter, verse 24 and 25. Listen for the trumpet. Mm -hmm. He says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. That's the trumpet. That's a message. That's a message. The dead will hear <laughs> the voice. Over here it says, but the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. So the way you spin it. Right. If you are already alive from your mother's womb and you hear that sound, right. then you need to rise from the dead, you sleeper. When you hear the gospel. When you hear the gospel. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up and walk. Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there's nothing hard about it. You just have, I heard a preacher tell a, a, a man say, if you would think you'd be the smartest person in your family. I am the smartest person in my family. So am I. <laughs> yeah. So see, see, you, 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 you. All you have to do is stop, think, and consider what the Bible is saying. Continue. Uh, verse First Corinthians fifteen and fifty three says, "For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal." With immortality, mm -hmm. when the perishable has clothed, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true: death has been swallowed up in victory. Now, now, if you say mm -hmm. that that happens after you die, why would the Bible says this perishable must? Put on imperishable. I, mean, I would say because m most people that are not reading and studying the scriptures does not know what imperishable clothing looks like. Case in point. But in Galatians, uh, Paul writes that you must be clothed with Christ. Right. Or in Corinthians, it says the. The new creation. Right. Which is the new clothing. Right. That's a good scripture. Let's yeah. read that one. Sure. Second <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corinthians 5 and 17. And you know, that's that is the that is a popular scripture among the Christians. Oh yeah. I, I had that. But they can't understand. They, no, they can't no, explain no. it. No. Uh Corinth, Second Corinthians five and sixteen says, "So from now on, mm. we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come; the old has gone." The new is here. Mm. Exclamation mark. Yes, 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 yes. They yes, try to drive that yes, home. That's right. 
that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. So the, 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 the perishable must be clothed. Must be. Before you die. And then it goes on to say, this mortal. Now, mortal means subject to death. Mm -hmm. Immortal means not subject to death. Right. There's a difference. There's, don't you know there's a difference between a wise man and a wiser man? A wise man believes half of what he hears, and a wiser man knows what half to believe. Amen. There's a difference. Yeah. yeah. Now, 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 now it says this mortal must put on immortality, and this, I mean, this mortal must put on immortality. So, so you got to put on immortality means you're not subject to death anymore, right? Right. So my question is, when do, when do eternal life starts? Well, for the, for the believer, right? Not the person that believes they're a believer by default. Mm -hmm. But for the believer, it starts as soon as you get a revelation that you have to start living the scriptures now. And the book is not a book for when you die. It's a book for the here and now. Right, right. But the but immortality, I see people searching for immortality um, by getting a statue at the Staples Center. Mm -hmm. They're going to be remembered forever. Um, I see people searching for immortality by, by creating a boxing record, 50 and 0 or whatever. And they think that they're going to be immortalized and remembered forever. So... So I see people searching for immortality by making a mark on the world, by being the, the uh, uh, like a Michael Jackson, a, a great singer, sold the most records, uh, the Beatles, whatever. And they think that they're going to be immortalized that way because, mm -hmm. because the world will be talking about you for years and years and years. Uh, there's a movie about Greek mythology called, the, called uh, Troy. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and those fighters wanted to be remembered through the age of time. Mm -hmm. They wanted people to continue to talk about their battles and their victories. Mm -hmm. But over time, eventually, nobody remembers what happened way back then anyway. So Correct. all it takes is another 300 years to go by and it's going to be, you know. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so, you know, high schools can, you know, you... You look back and you go, oh man, um, Janet Avery held the record for for track thing, but another hundred years go by and it's a new list on the wall. Right. But right. they, but I'm, people search for immortality that way, and 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 the Apostle Paul was writing in First Corinthians, you know, don't run this race aimlessly. Right. You know, you gotta you you gotta know what your what, what the race is about and know what you're searching for. You're not trying to get. Uh, a heavyweight championship belt. You're trying to get the crown of life. Correct, though. So, so we agreed that eternal life starts when you born again in the flesh. In the flesh. Yeah, and before you die. Right in the flesh, because I mean, there's there are battles that you. And the power of the Holy Spirit have to fight right here on earth. It's you and God versus evil that's on the earth. Once you die, there's no more battles. None. All you're doing, the, 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 the uh, revelation says there's no more tears, no more crying, no more death. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is praising the Lord. Right. Right here is where you can actually take your stands against evil. Correct. And when you got the Holy Spirit as the power... Then if God is for you, who can be against you? Right. So this is where we have the opportunity to actually show people the heavenly man, the incorruptible, the immortality, and actually be an exhibit or an example of what that looks like. And that's the race that we run. Right. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Now you read. Now you read in. You read in uh, Romans. Uh huh. The sixth chapter. You went from verse 1 to 6. Mm -hmm. And it says, in those verses, it says, we were crucified with Christ. Right. We were buried with Christ. Mm -hmm. 
we rose with Christ mm -hmm. in newness of life. Right. It says, reckon yourself to be dead. Dead unto sin, but alive unto God. Mm -hmm. That's before you die. Now, you can, get, can you give me a scripture to prove that eternal life starts before you die? Can I give you a scripture? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Give me one. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 25. Okay. Now, when you when you remember we used to go to the football games the, in high school, mm -hmm. and they would put up a scripture. John 3.16. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. And what does it say? It says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. For whoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. So when does everlasting life begin? When you believe. When you hear the trumpet. <laughs> when you when believe you, the message. When you wake up. Who hath believed our report? Whom uh, the Lord has been revealed. What does Isaiah said? But see, in John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, Everlasting life, according to Revelation, my revelation is that eternal life starts when you believe. Right. Not not lip service. Because okay. because because uh, perish, because you're perishing. So right. You're gonna, so so if you believe, then you're going to get clothed with imperishable. Right. Or before you believe, you mortal. Right. Then you could be clothed with immortality. Right. Based yeah. on your belief. Based on your faith. Based on your faith. Something. Evidence hoped for, and ev uh, uh, hoped for, and evidence of things not seen. That's right. Now, not a hey, based on your belief, not on somebody else's belief. Don't believe nothing Doctor Burke says. First uh, 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 John five and nine says what? First John <laughs> five and nine. That's your favorite scripture. First John five and nine. It is one of my. Favorites. Mm -hmm. It says, we accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his son. Okay, so 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 if you listen to Dr. Burks and uh, Brother uh, uh, Avery and Dr. Avery, you need to go and check out what they're saying right. before you start spreading Because you know how, you can't even tell it right, what we just said. I told somebody Adam didn't sin, and he went and told his ex-wife, and she said, you know, that man ain't got good sense. <laughs> he couldn't explain it after he said it. After he said it, he couldn't explain what I said through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So he's just a parakeet. He's, he's just a parakeet. parakeet. Good morning, Marva. He's just a parakeet. Oh. He's just a parakeet. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it says, it says human testimony. Right, can we line that up with First Peter? This your house. <laughs> Look, I know you're going to come with something good. I ain't got to worry about you coming with something. Second Peter uh, uh, 1 and 20. So we got human testimony, but God's testimony is greater. And the scripture says, above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of right. things. For prophecy never had its origin in, in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So even though it was human testimony, what they said was greater than them mm -hmm. because they carried the message from God. Yeah, because he gave them the message. But human testimony is what they might be confused about because your human testimony is, man, I was stuck in a tree and the fire department came and got me down. <laughs> and it had to be the Lord that called because I didn't have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Not but, that human testimony. Not that human testimony. But, now, Paul, Paul but, had human testimony in, in Acts 17 11. Uh huh. But what does it say in Acts 17 11? 1711. About the Bereans. He said they were of noble. Let's see. Let me, let me get it. 1711. He said that um, the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. 
But they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. And as a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. So Paul gave them the message from the prophets. They examined it and checked it out. Right. And they believed. Right. They didn't know take Paul's word. No. What about the Ethiopian eunuch? That's right. What did Joshua Messiah says in John 5 and 39? John? John? Yeah, uh, uh, Yachanan, which is Hebrew. He said 5 and 39. Five, oh, what he oh, said, yeah, 5 yeah. and 39. 5 and 39 says, You study the scriptures diligently because you think in them that you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. He was talking about the Old Testament. Yeah, the prophets from the Old Testament. Right. So you can master the Bible, but like I said, First Corinthians fifteen uh, on to uh, what well, last uh, verse. Mm -hmm. You got to get a revelation of that. Once you get a revelation of that, but you you have to master yourself. You have to study. Not everybody is going to study. Not everybody can run ten miles. If you had never run 10 miles, don't try to run 10 miles. Try to run a mile, and then the next day, try to run a mile and a half, or, you know, add to it. Dr. Avery, can you get uh, Hebrews 2.14? I'm going to finish your scripture. Um, it's, um, when the perishable have been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, mm -hmm. then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Verse 55 says, Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Now, right there, people may say, You see, we still all die today. So, what is that talking about? Mm -hmm. Can you read 2 and 14? Since Hebrews? The, yep, Hebrews 2 and 14. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death, be might bring wait sorry I can't see that okay so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death that is the devil and free those who are their lives held were held in slavery by their fear by their fear of, of death. death see now that's a good scripture but you know what that has to be explained because <laughs> it said devil who is the devil? <laughs> we need to say that for another time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just giving them something to think about. Yeah, for, for as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, yeah. he himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power over death, that is the devil, and deliver them whom through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. But we also talked about the old man and the new man. What did Christ said in John 8, 44? Okay, but before you go there, I got a question. Okay. This is because this is your, uh, this is the outline for, for this study. And uh, death, how, how was death swallowed up into victory? Where, where, where? He actually got this, you look at the bottom, he mm -hmm. actually got it from Hosea 13 and 14. That's right. But he says, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Mm -hmm. You know, like say if a person uh, went to a funeral and is looking at death saying, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Mm -hmm. But uh, cutting Jake here still, death obviously had victory over Cutting Pete here. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Uh, uh, you see what I'm saying? No. Well, does death have victory? It says death has swap. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Has when you read that scripture, mm -hmm. what do you think about when you when you when you when? I think of Christ. Mm-hmm. You think of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, you think of his death. That he's overcome death. Hell and the grave. <laughs> okay. But, but a person would ask you, how does that apply to me? I mean, anybody can go to church and preach that death, that every Resurrection Sunday, they're going to say he rose. Mm -hmm. So you say, yeah, I think about Christ. He swallowed, he, he, he overcame death. 
But how does that apply to me? That applies to uh, you and me because you read over in 1 Corinthians 15 about if Christ had not raised from the dead, mm -hmm. we are still in our sins. We are still dead. Can I, can, can I swallow up death in victory? Where oh death is your victory? Can I swallow up death in victory? You most certainly can. Can I swallow up death in victory? How? That's what I was asking you. You said how? I was asking you. Christ already, he said, yeah. No, Christ no, I, already did it. This is Q and A for the people. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not drilling you guys. Okay. I'm well, just, drill. I, 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 drill on. We we love the, when you drill yeah, us. Go ahead, yeah, drill on. Drill on. The people need an answer. Yeah. You know, they need to know. They need to know that you understand what we're talking about in a death, right? We go to a funeral home, we see death, mm -hmm. and it's never understood, right? I understand it, you understand okay. it, we got it. But for the people on the other side of the screen, they may be saying, well, look, I still don't get that. It was just two months ago, we're talking to a 70, 80-year-old man who's a, who, who accomplished... Almost everything that you could possibly accomplish in your life. He had lots of land. He had plaques all on the wall of all his achievement. Mm -hmm. And when I talked to him before he died, he said, I never understood death. Why? You go all through life and don't understand death. You're not going right? to you're not gonna never understand death because death is not important. It's living. <laughs> it's not about death. That's what I'm trying to... That's what it is all about. It's not about death. It's about life. Well, that's My boy Longfellow said, when you <laughs> came into this world, you were naked and bad. As you go through this world, it's trouble and care. When you leave this world, nobody knows where. But if you do well here, you will do well there. Somebody said, Dr. Burke, well, there doesn't matter. Do well here. <laughs> All right. Get the revelation, not the devilation, because it's not about death. It's about life. All right, all right. I think his, his more so his question was not understanding death. It's about what happens after death, after the physical death, was probably the, the understanding of the question is what, I don't understand death. It's not that I don't understand that you have to die. It's understanding what happens after death, is, after you have the physical death. No, no, what I'm saying is that the scripture says death has been swallowed up. Mm -hmm. uh, what we know is, is that we live, and I agree with you 100%, mm -hmm. it's about living. Right. Because, because when we, if, if you make it about living, like Jesus told Martha, if you believe in the resurrection, you're never going to die. Right. Right, so I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Tough, at the same time, tough <laughs> pill to swallow, but I believe it. Cut it in half. I, I, cut it in half and swallow it. <laughs> but when you say, yeah, you don't, we don't understand death because we're trying to figure out what happens death after life. When I, we watched the movie One Night in Miami, we, we talked about the, uh, the singer Sam Cooke. Mm -hmm. So I went back and listened to the words, and he said, I don't want to die because I don't know what's up there. That's right. That's what he said. Right. So he don't understand that. Right. Because I ain't ready to die. But it's but we saying that you we we talking about living. Right. So it's a continuance of living that your spirit has when you are rising from the dead. You've been sleep. You getting the knowledge. You understanding. You transitioning. You transforming, and 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 you're not gonna perish according to John three sixteen. You shall not perish. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to perish. Right. So I'm going to, if you see me in a casket, no, I'm still living. You see what I'm saying? I'm, if God says he's not the God of the dead, he's the God of the living, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then he's the God of Quentin after he died because we all living. Right. Yeah. So I get that. Right. But what I'm saying is, is that the scripture says death has been swallowed up. Right. So that's what I was getting at. Mm -hmm. now, now, you. Now, 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 if you can explain, not you. Mm -hmm. How it's been swallowed up in your life? Now we we now we 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 helping somebody figure out how death can be swallowed up in their life. Mm -hmm. Like you know where like you said, it's not about uh, death. Where what am I gonna do before I die? My bucket list. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right, right. Now it's you didn't change the trajectory from I'm living to 80, 90 to man, I'm living. Right. 
I'm living. Right. I'm in Christ. So that means we never die. My spirit lives on with the Creator. You know, you know? what? We can answer that. When we do the video on what's wrong with the world. Okay. All right. That's my, that's my point. What's wrong with the world? <laughs> I'll tell you what's wrong with the world when we do that video. All right. Stay sweet. tuned. Okay. Well, uh, you good? Okay. All right. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next week. You guys say your goodbyes. I'm going to turn. Goodbye. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend.